Good afternoon. Um, first off, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Today is the beginning of a great new year for the Redskins organization and its fans. Uh, first, I'd like to thank, though, Bill Callahan, who was here five years, did a great uh, job for us, a, a great guy, and we really appreciate him. What the Redskins have needed is a culture change, someone that can bring a winning culture to our organization, and it starts and ends with our head coach. Uh, when looking for that man, I look for a class act. Uh, that's how you describe Coach Rivera. He was two-time coach of the year, and for those of you that don't understand, that's very, very hard to do. You should Google that, because uh, it's an impressive, impressive. Um, uh, he was 15 and one, which is extremely hard to do. Uh, did my research, spent a lot of time, uh, talked to a lot, a lot of people, uh, a lot of coaches, and one thing that came across were certain words, and these words were integrity, honesty, knowledge, grit, determination. It's all about winning. Ron Rivera knows how to win as a player, as a coach, as a new head coach of the Redskins. One thing that's very, very important, we're going to have one voice, and only one voice alone, and that's the coaches. I'd like to welcome Ron's wife, Stephanie, uh, who we've gotten to know over the last few weeks, and uh, our new head coach of the Washington Redskins, Coach Ron Rivera. Thank you. You know, with, uh, it was about 30 days ago that um, your team, this team, got me unemployed. So just so you know, we're good now. Thank you. It's an honor to serve as a coach in the NFL. It really, truly is. There are only 32 of us at any one given time. And these jobs are scarce. But this one, the Washington Redskins, this one's special. This is one of the almost original teams. Started in 1932. There's a lot of history behind this football team. And in order for us to get back to where we want to be, we've got to study that history, embrace that history, and prepare to repeat that history. Because if we're not, we're doomed to repeat the most recent history. We're not going to do that, guys. We really aren't. Everything we do is going to be about winning. OK, we're going to learn to do things the right way, and that's the only way we're going to do them. Because if it doesn't help us, we're not doing it, man. That's just as simple as it gets. So why did I choose the Redskins? Probably the question, I know a lot of you guys are wondering that right now. With everything that's out there, well, I can tell you right now, it's not about the money. If I wanted the money, I'd still be out there trying to pit a couple teams against each other. I took this job for one simple reason. One simple reason. Because Dan Snyder came to me with a very interesting perspective. For weeks, he's explored the reasons why some teams win and some teams don't. He told me the common factor in that transitional success of teams like the Patriots, the Seahawks, and the Chiefs and some of the other ones was the decision to take it and make a coach-centered approach. Not an owner-centered approach or a team president or a GM, but a coach-centered approach. I told Mr. Snyder that I appreciate the fact that he believes the head coach matters. But I told him I would be honored, but under one condition. It had to be a player-centered culture, a player-centered culture, something I truly do believe in. <coughs> My responsibility is to get the most out of the players, to work with them, teach them, mentor them. If I have to do it one by one, I most certainly will do it. I've done it in the past, and I'll do it again. I'll do what I can to help these young men become not just the players we want, but the men in the community we need. These are the guys that can help change things, not just on the football field, but in this world. And I really do believe that. I was fortunate enough to have that in Carolina, and I hope and I'm going to work to have it here in Washington. Things will begin and end with one simple principle, discipline. I come from a military family where discipline, it isn't taught, it's lived. It's expected from day one. I have a philosophy that every player, every coach, everyone who works for this organization, they'll know it day one. You're not going to play for this team. You're not going to work for this team if you don't have the discipline and commitment to give us everything you have. No exceptions, no excuses. It's that simple, guys. We have to hold each other accountable. And that's something we most certainly will do. We'll expect the most from each other. Whether I was in Chicago or Carolina, 
We're at our very best when the players knew that the coaches had their backs. And this is the thing I'm going to ask from the players. Do it the way we teach you. Do it the way we ask. You do it that way, the success will be yours. Okay? You do it that way, the success will be yours. If you don't, success is going to be yours, but it's not going to be right. Why? Because if you fail, it's on you. Do it our way. Do it the right way. And if we fail, it's on me. Okay, it'll be on me, the head coach. It's that simple. And I truly believe that. If I ask of you and it doesn't work, I'm to blame. I told Mr. Snyder I wanted to assemble a coaching staff that was truly dedicated to the players and teachers. And teachers. Okay? I don't have to have a great big names. What I have to have is great teachers. We want to teach these guys how to play football to the best of their abilities, to the best of our abilities, and also to be good quality young men off the field. I want players who are tough, hungry, who will do whatever it takes to play Redskin football in January and hopefully into February. I told him I wanted to work hand in hand with the head of player personnel who could spot potential and others that even I didn't see and others didn't see. That's going to be important because it has to be a collaboration. No matter who it is, no matter who's working with us, it has to be a collaboration. This is not a one-man show. I don't have all the answers. I'm going to rely on people around me. I'm going to rely on the coaches and the personnel that we have put in place to help us put this football team together. I told him I didn't want to go through a five-year rebuilding process because, quite honestly, I, don't, I just don't have the patience. And from what I've read, neither does he, so we understand that. <laughs> I told him this team, this team has some raw talent. It really, truly does. It's got some quality veteran leadership that can help this team become contenders. So at the end of the day, guys, this is what the team's going to be made of. It's going to be made of good quality young football players and solid veteran leadership. Help us take this football team to the next level. So you know what he said? He said, Coach, I want this to be the last job you ever had in the NFL. I want you to go from coaching the Redskins to collecting Social Security. I turn 58 next week, so I'm getting close. But that sounded pretty good to me. And so I say for the very first time, okay, from the very first, where'd you guys hide? I guess there is no jersey. There's supposed to be a jersey up here. But you know as they say, hail to the Redskins. Let's roll, man. Let's go. Come on. <laughs> so with that, I'd like to take questions. If there's any questions, be more than happy to. If not, appreciate you. I think we got a couple, Ron. Okay. Uh, J.P. Finley, NBC Sports, Washington. We see Jack Del Rio here. You talked about the coaching staff. You want teachers and leaders. How is it going filling out the rest of the staff and some of the folks here internally, namely Kevin O'Connell? Well, we're in the interview process right now. You know, we've got several names that we've reached out to. We've gotten permission from some teams to bring some of these guys in, and we'll be going through that process now. Again, we're right in the middle of it. Um, I shouldn't say in the middle. We're in the beginning of it, and it's going to take a little bit of time. And then similarly with the front office, Eric Schaefer, Doug Williams, Santos, Kyle Smith, those guys, similar timeline? Well, with those guys, it's really just about meeting them, getting to know them as we start going forward. As I said, everything that we do is going to be about a collaborative effort. There, there, there's, there's no one pure authority on this other than the owner. But the key is, is really that we are going to collaborate, we're going to talk, we're going to work together, and we're going to come to decisions that we believe are best for this organization. Not best for an individual, but best for the organization. Michael Phillips, Richmond Times-Dispatch. Yeah, I would imagine you've had some time to reflect on your time at Carolina. What are some of the things you've learned that you'll put into play now in this job? Well, more so than anything else, it's about the players. If you've got players that are right, players that are where they need to be, players doing the things that they, they, they can do, you give yourself a chance to win. And one of the things that I really truly believe is that we as coaches have got to give these guys the opportunity and put them in position to have success. If we don't do that, we're failing the players. It all falls back on us. And as I said earlier to the guys, if you do it the way we ask and we have success, it's your success. If you fail, it's on me. But please don't do it your own way. Ron, John Kahn, ESPN. Dan brought this up about the cult centered approach. You seem to appreciate that and the one voice. Why is that important to you and to an organization? Well, I think because you don't want people going back and forth. Everybody's got, when we step into the room or we step out of a room, everybody has to be on the same page. Okay, it's like when, when, when Jack's going to put the defense together, we can't have one coach telling somebody something else as opposed to what Jack wants. That's, that's just the way it's going to be. 
you know, we want everybody focused in on what their job is. I got a little bit of saying these guys are going to get tired of hearing it, but it's true. We need 11 guys doing one thing at a time, not one guy trying to do all 11. Do your job, man. We'll have success. I promise you that. Ron, Rhiannon Walker with The Athletic. You mentioned the fact that this team has some, some young talent, some, th some pieces to build around. As you guys currently look at it, Jack said that they're going to run a 4-3. How do you guys currently on the roster, what does it fit for the personnel, and what are some positions of need for the 4-3 for you all? Well, I think it fits very well. I really do. You look at the defensive line, and we've got guys that we believe can play the 1-3 and three technique already. Uh, we also believe we've got some guys that played the outside linebacking position that are going to transition to playing the defensive end sp spots for us, S specifically the six, the nine, and the five. So we feel real good about those guys. I like the linebacking core. I think it's a pretty solid group of guys. They run well and they play physical. What we want to do is get these guys playing downhill through their gap. We're going to play the run on our way to the quarterback. Hey, uh, Rod. NBC Sports Washington, when you look at Dwayne Haskins, he's going to be a big part of your success here in the next couple of years. What did you see from him out of year one, and what do you think he can become for this team? I think he'd become a, uh, a franchise-style quarterback. I do. I think it's going to be a time. It's, it's, it's a process, though. I'm not going to say it's going to happen overnight, but I've been fortunate that, you know, several years ago we drafted a guy as the number one pick. And we had a plan. And what we're trying to do right now is develop that plan for his development as we go forward. I also think there's a couple of good veteran quarterbacks that obviously going to give them opportunities to play as well. We won't know until we get ready to open up in September. So until then, everything's just a process. It's a working process. We can't get ahead of it. We've got to stay to the plan and make sure we're preparing ourselves properly to win football games. Hey, uh, Ron, <laughs> over, over here. Les Carpenter at the Washington Post. A uh, couple things. First of all, why you know, maybe not take some time after uh, after you get fired, you know, to not say maybe you know a year or something to kind of recalibrate? And then secondly, why jump right away into a job rather than maybe you know kind of feel everybody out over the next few weeks? Well, first of all, I had four weeks off. I'm ready to go back to work. I really am. You know, I got tired of getting up and having to do dishes. So um, I'm I'm serious too. You guys think I'm kidding? I'm serious. Um, truth of the matter is is People ask me when I first got let go, I told everybody I wanted to get back into football. And they asked me, well, what is it that, that you're going to be looking for? And I simply said fit. Okay, I simply said fit. Um, the timeline is that uh, right after, I think it was Friday of the week I was let go, uh, Mr. Schneider reached out to my agent. And so the two of them talked for a couple of days. And then I got a phone call from Mr. Schneider on Monday of the following week, and we started talking. And we talked the first day for about 40 minutes, the second day for about 20. And then I went and I got a bunch of tape. And I've seen about six games these guys played, uh, including the one that, uh, that when I was in Carolina that they beat us in. And uh, I had an opportunity to, to take a real good look at this team. And so I've, I've got write-ups on, on every player that played in those six games. And, and, and that's why uh, it's part of the reason why I chose this team, because I did like what I saw. Um, you know, I, I watched the last four on television as well and got an opportunity to see these guys fight to the end. Uh, the Dallas game, we got a little bit out of hand near the end, and it's understandable to a degree. But for the most part, the way they played, the way they fought, some of these young guys didn't know any better. They just knew they showed up and they played hard. Uh, that was impressive to me. Um, then the other thing was, in talking with Mr. Schneider, the thing that I got was that um, we talked about his vision, okay, his vision, his vision of getting back to the tradition of Washington Redskin football. And I was really impressed about that. We talked about the history of it. We talked about the things that have happened in the past that made this such a great franchise, that, that had fans that were rabid fans. I remember from when I played, we used to go to the stadium early, and there'd be all those folks tailgating and, and, and letting us know how much they appreciated us when we walked into the stadium. And uh, it was a tough place to play. And that's what we wanted to bring back. That's what he wants to bring back. And I was really impressed by his vision. And then he shared with me his plan. And he shared with me the ideas that he, 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 had, he, had, he had studied and understood, uh, like I said, the one where it's, a, it's more of a coach-centered approach in terms of decision-making. Um, and again, as I said, I, I, I'm, I'm not omnipotent. I mean, at the end of the day, guys, uh, I've got a group of, of men that I'm going to collaborate with. You know, all of our personnel people uh, are very vital to our success because of the things that they've done in the last three drafts. Um, that was one of the things also that Mr. Snyder asked me to do was study those three drafts and look at those guys that are on that roster. Um, and I did that. And I looked at the veteran guys that were there that were leading this team, that were giving these guys some hope, some chances, um, being the mentors to these guys and, and showing them how things are supposed to be done. And I really liked what I saw. And, and I began to feel the fit. 
And the more we talked about the plan and the process that he was talking about, the more excited I got. Uh, this didn't happen overnight. Th this decision was not made on the 30th. Okay, this decision was made over a period of time of, 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 of getting together with him, sitting down, um, spending probably 35 hours in the freezer. <laughs> he has his room at his, at, at his place that's just frigid. And, and I think he did it on purpose to make sure I stayed awake. So, um, But we went for 35 hours. I mean, really, we, we seriously did. We, we went through every aspect of the organization. That's what I was really impressed with, that he was willing to sit there and go through it piece by piece. And we truly did. I spent a lot of time getting to know the organization, getting to understand the, or, the, the structure of what he was looking for. Um, so to me, again, as I said, it was, it, was, it was hearing his vision, understanding his plan, and then learning the process of what he was trying to accomplish. And then I talked about my plan and what I wanted to do, and it really seemed to fit his very well. And, and so those, you know, my, the four weeks I was off, I was really only off for about five days and, and, and then uh, a couple other days where I, got, I snuck out to the golf course, but that, that was it. Other than that, I was really just kind of looking at, at these guys trying to prepare going forward. Chris Russell, uh, 106.7 with Hannah and SI. Um, what's one, of the, one or two of the things that maybe you want to do differently or better? You come with a lot of accolades, a lot of success in Carolina, but everybody always wants to change something in their lives. Is there anything that stands out to you that you learned maybe about yourself? Win the Super Bowl. That's good. I mean it, too. You know, I, I, one of the things that, that the only reason you become a head coach in this league, in my opinion, is to win. That's it. That's the bottom line. If you do it for any other reason, you're wrong. Okay, and that's what I want to do, and I really do. I'm not just saying it because I'm at a press conference. I say it because I truly believe that. Okay, I've been very fortunate. Football has been a big part of my life. This is going to be my 34th year in the league. Okay, so I've seen a lot. I've done a lot. And the one thing that I've, I've had is I've had the success to be on a Super Bowl championship team. I would love to give these guys that opportunity so they know what it feels like, what the experience is when you're standing on the podium. That's what we want to work towards. We want to work towards that going forward. And I want our fans to know that's what we're going to work for. I understand they're disgruntled. I understand they're upset. And they deserve to be. We haven't won. So we've got to start winning. Okay? But I tell you, if you give us the opportunity to get behind us, we're going to give us, give us, we're going to give you our best effort. That's what we're going to do as a, as a football team. Ron, Kareem Copeland from the Washington Post over here. Okay. Um, what was it about Jack that you wanted to, that made him such a priority and that you wanted to get him locked up here so quickly? Because I know who Jack is. I, I know who he is as a player. We competed against each other collegiately and professionally, and I've got tremendous respect for who he's been. He's been a very successful coach in this league. Uh, he's had opportunities in this league, and he's succeeded in this league. The thing about Jack that, that I really, truly do, will appreciate having him on the staff, too, is one of the things that I've, I tell young coaches is that, the one thing you have to have on your staff is a guy that's been there. Like a little saying, don't draw me a map unless you've been there. Well, Jack's been there. And Jack and I had this conversation earlier today, and I told Jack, if you see something wrong, you see something that we need to think about, please tell me, because that's the only way I'm going to know. And I've said the same thing to the players that I've met. I've said to them a couple times that you need to tell me. If you see it, you've got to tell me, because if you don't, it's as if you did it yourself. Ron, Rand Walker, The Athletic. You talked about being a consummate winner. You were a part of that Eagles team in the early 2000s that had those back-to-back -back NFC East championships. There hasn't been a consecutive NFC East champion since those teams. What will it take for Washington to achieve that success of not only winning a division, but repeatedly doing so, making conference championships, and ultimately getting to the Super Bowl? Well, first of all, we've got to make sure we get the right kind of players, and then we as coaches got to make sure we teach them and coach them up to the best of our abilities. And then we've got to stay true to it. We've got to stay true to, 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 to what I believe is a little bit of a philosophy, and that is the best team has a great sense of family. The best family has great culture. And within that culture, there's tremendous character. And that's what we've got to build. We've got to build that. We've got to build character. We've got to build culture. We've got to build team. We've got to build family. If we can do that, we can win. I watched Andy do that. I was on Andy's original staff. My first five seasons were with him. Okay, I was on three straight NFC championship, championship games, and that was tremendous. It was a heck of a feeling to be involved in those kind of games. That's what we want to get to, but the only way we can do it is if we truly do become a family. Ron, uh, Ben Standig with The Athletic. Uh, we, we heard you talk here about this coach-centric approach and also that you do want to collaborate with people, but from the perspective of personnel, the draft, where does it come do, what can you say about having final say, or where does your, I guess, 
level of uh, power and such go into those decisions? The biggest thing that's going to happen is, and I'll say it again, is we're going to collaborate. We're going to get together as a group and we'll discuss things. If we have to continue to discuss things and it goes a little bit longer, then we'll ask Mr. Steyer to help. Okay, but for the most part, he's given us the opportunity to be a group of men that work together to collaborate to do one thing that's be on the same page, pick the right kind of players, and then put them in position to have success. Ron, Matt Paris from the Washington Times. Right. Okay. Uh, you mentioned Dwayne and it being a process, but what, what are some of the next steps that you think he has to kind of take? Well, I think, first of all, he's going to have to step up and become a leader. I mean, all the great ones have become leaders, and they become leaders whether they're, they're rookies, okay, or they're 10, 12 year vets. But you've got to step up. You've got to be where you need to be. You've got to do things you're supposed to do. And it's all going to stop with, start with your, your off season. How do you prepare yourself? How do you get yourself ready? I think it's probably one of the biggest things that we've got to do. Um, and not just with him, but every one of our players have got to understand that this is an opportunity to lead. You know, I'm going to do something where I try to create opportunities for every player to step up and be the leader at one time or the other. He doesn't have to be, you know, one of the greatest players to play running back, okay? He's got to be a guy that's willing to step up in front of his teammates and tell them, hey, let's go, man. Let's roll. Ron, uh, David Aldridge with The Athletic. Welcome to Washington. Um, Thank you. There have been other coaches who have stood at that podium who we thought had the coach-centric approach. Marty Schottenheimer was there. Joe Gibbs was there. Mike Shanahan was there. All great coaches. And none of them really worked out the way we all thought, including them, I'm sure. So what it is? what is it that you have been told that makes you feel comfortable knowing that you'll be allowed to see this through to the conclusion you want? Well, nobody really knows, but I'll tell you this. I believe in me, and I'll bet on me. We'll see what happens. That's all I can tell you. But I, I will give you one thing, and that is I'm going to work. I'm going to work very hard. I'm going to do the things that I believe, and I'm going to stay true to who I am. I'm Craig Hoffman of 106.7 The Fan. You did things in Charlotte, like move your office down close to the locker rooms, things that built relationships with players. I understand you haven't been here very long. I don't know how much scoping of the building you've done, but are there things that you already know from a process standpoint, from a culture standpoint, that you're going to concretely do to try to do those same things you were able to do in Charlotte? There are a couple things, you know, and, and, and once it's time to get started, you know, I think everybody in the building will feel it. But for the most part, most of anything else, this is not about me. Okay, this is about us as an organization, us as a team. And I think if we stay true to us, we have a chance. Hey, Coach, Donna Hopkins from Pro Football Plus. When you look at this team and the players that are here already and looking forward, what needs to be take place for to move in the right direction player-wise and what's needed? Well, I think just the biggest thing is going to have to be the commitment. You know, once we get into the off-season program, we'll see. I mean, but the biggest thing we need is we need everybody. Everybody's got to be here. Everybody's got to give ourselves an opportunity to grow and develop. And it's not just as players with X's and O's, but as a team, you know, and, and, and again, not just as I said, there's guys on the field, but guys off the field as well. Ron. Dario Lopez Capera, Telemundo 44. I would like to make a couple of questions, if it's possible, answer me in Spanish. Uh, first of all, how do you feel for being the first Hispanic head coach in the team history? And what is your main goal with the Redskins? But I, I didn't get the last question. What is your main goal with the team? My main goal? Yes. Main goal is to, to build a consistent winner and to win a Super Bowl. Okay, I know somebody says, you shouldn't say that. Well, I'm going to say it because, again, I'm going to put it out there. These, these guys, you know, the thing about it more so than anything else is you can't be afraid to put yourself out there. Okay, and, and, and whether you do or you don't, we'll see. You just never know, but you've got to be willing to try. You've got to be willing to put it out there and see what happens. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go out there and see what happens. Okay, I'm going to work. I'm going to do things the way I believe in. I'm going to rely on my coaches. I'm going to rely on our organization, rely on our players. You know, but, and that's all I can do, just, just give, it, give it my best. Let's take one more for Coach. Ron Barry Sperluger from the Washington Post. You spent a lot of time with Dan Snyder talking about this job. Did you ask questions about why there hadn't been success over the last two decades, even as you reflected on, mm -hmm. on the times they did win Super Bowls, you know, decades ago? We, you know, we talked an awful lot about those things. We talked about the things that he's learned and he's grown as, as, as a person and as an owner. I mean, it was, it was a very frank conversation. He was very honest, very upfront, and very candid. Um, and the thing that he's done is exactly what he has said so far. And, and again, based on the things that I've gotten an opportunity to walk around this facility, an opportunity to see the things that he's done, he's made the commitment, you know, financially and, and, and bringing the things that these, these players need to try and create an edge, you know. And, and again, now I really do appreciate the opportunity. 
Um, he's given me the opportunity to, to do things the way I believe is right for the organization. Um, and again, a lot of it had to do with the conversations we've had. I'm telling you, we, we, we met over almost 30, 35 hours. And it was, it was very in-depth. You know, it was over a period of time. You know, it was, um, it was, it was, it was a, it really was. I really appreciated that fact. And I think that's when I told everybody when I first got fired, did my press conference on my way out, I said, I'm going to look for the right fit. I really believe this is the right fit. I'm excited about it, and, and, and we'll know. We'll know in a few years, but hopefully we'll know right away because I, I do think there's a quality group of young men that really if we can give them some direction, if we can go ahead and build this culture together, we can give ourselves a chance to win football games. Cool. All right, thank, thank you. Everyone.